Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. However, today I'm going to change it up and make a tiny spooky thing. First things first though, I need to make a pool. Fortunately, I've got a bunch of old scraps of MDF lying around that happen to be exactly the right size once I cut them down to the right size. To make the tiles, I'll mark out 1 centimeter intervals on the X and Y axes so that I come back through with my V chisel to carve out the grout lines. Then I'll repeat the process on the bottom and side panels and then give everything a few coats of white primer. Now to paint the tiles, I want to give it a nice coat of blue. However, pool tiles rarely seem to be a uniform blue, instead they're a mix of various light and dark and everything in between. To that end, I found the easiest way to make it look like I've got a lot of different tiles was to paint the whole base with varying shades of blue, then highlight specific tiles with deeper or lighter shades. Then once that's been given ample time to dry, I'll cover the entire surface in a thick layer of thinned out white paint before quickly rubbing the majority of it off. The goal here is to get most of the surface paint off, but leave the white between the tiles so that it looks like grout. Then a quick check to make sure the tiles line up and I can glue all the pieces together. A base layer of resin brushed over the tiles will both give them a nice shiny tiley appearance and it'll help reduce bubbles from forming in the resin when I get to the pouring. Now I was trying to figure out how to best make this extra spooky and I thought to myself, what's spookier than those pot lights on the bottom of a pool? So I marked out four equidistant tiles, drilled some holes through the bottom of the MDF and then filled them with resin. Then I made four teeny tiny clay rings, painted them chrome with my fancy chrome markers, and I stuck them in place and filled the top with a bit more resin. Finally, to make the ladder on the side, I'll cut a couple pieces of shiny armature wire length, then bend them into an appropriately pool ladder-like shape. Then I can make the rest of the ladder pieces out of white clay. Finally, with all the pieces glued together, I can attach it to the pool side using a little bit more resin. Of course, my pool is looking a little too clean at this point, so to gross it up a little bit, I've mixed up some very thin, very runny, rusty brown paint that'll add to the ladder around the corners, the pot lights, and kind of all willy-nilly wherever I feel like. Then using a new-to-me makeup sponge, I'll dab some greens all over the place before sprinkling bits of dirt and detritus around the base. I'm going to be using a bit more resin as glue, since actual glue doesn't tend to react very well to two-part epoxy resin. Otherwise, the pool is finished and I get started on my Skulktopus. Skeletopus? Octoskull? I don't know. From this point forward, I'm just going to call him Terry. I'll start by making Terry's skull, since that's kind of the most important part of the Octo Skull, or at least it's tied in importance with the octopus part, but at any rate, starting with the skull gives me a nice big base to work with. Now I originally intended to make the skull like an octopus's skull, then I remember that octopus don't have skulls, or skeletons at all, so I'm just going to go with an oversized human skull. Of course, given that this is a huge humanoid skull, it's safe to assume that this is not anatomically correct. So don't come at me in the comments about how I've made the zygomatic arch too thin or the infraorbital foramen is too deep. Terry's skull is one of a kind after all, so let's just leave it at that. Finally, with the structure finished, I'll use this tiny nylon brush to poke the entire surface, giving Terry's skull a nice porous texture. Then 
And once it's been cured in the oven, I'll use my scalpel to cut the tiny cracks and fissures. Otherwise, Terry's skull is done and I can get to work on his octo appendages. Terry's skull is made out of firm super sculpey, but I'm going to be using cosplay for his arms because I want to make sure that I can squeeze him into the pool before I build the frame for the resin. Also cosplay is nice and bendy so I don't need to worry about building an armature for each of the arms. Instead I can just squish the eight appendages directly onto the base of the skull and then move them around until I'm happy with how they sit. At this point I'm not really worried about texture or detail since I'm only interested in getting the length, shape and position correct. I will give the bottom of each tentacle a bit of detail, but I won't bother with the top yet since I'll just add clay later. Now I can't put the resin coated MDF pool in the oven, so I've made a stand in out of cardboard. This will allow me to position Terry accordingly and make sure that when he's baked he'll fit my pool perfectly. To keep the vertical arms vertical during the baking process, I can also use a little painter's tape to keep them from sagging. And with the initial appendage bake a roaring success, it's time to start adding the rest of the octopus related detail. Finally one final bake later and Terry is finished and ready for painting. I'll start by giving a once over with a nice thick coat of white gesso before giving his big old octo skull a coat of well used bone white. Now before it dries completely I'll dab and scuff the skull with a sponge soaking up any of the pooling paint and ensuring Terry has a nice varied patina. Then I'll paint the tops of all his tentacles with an appropriately spooky dark purple and the undersides with an appropriately spooky underside pink. Finally, I'll paint the tops of the tentacles with a lighter purple before highlighting all the edges with a pretty much white purple highlight. Then the suction cups get a dry brush of pretty much white pink and Terry's ready for the pool. To make sure Terry isn't lonely, I made a normal sized skull off camera that's totally anatomically correct so no need to look too closely. Then I made a few more bones and ribs and fingers and toes to go with our unfortunate swimmer's skull. And then it's time to build the frame for the resin. Now if you pay very close attention to my resin pouring technique, you may notice that there are one or two bubbles. Because this resin is incredibly slow to cure and it's designed for deep pours, I was kind of hoping that it would essentially degas itself over the course of the week or so it takes to cure. However, by day three, I realized that it was not going to degas itself, so I ended up pouring the syrupy, sticky mess of semi-cured resin out and mixing up a new batch, making sure that I didn't introduce any new bubbles during the mixing. Then I cried over the totally wasted gallon of resin, then I went out and bought a pressure pot in the hope that spending the extra now will reduce the cost of all my fuck ups later. Minor hiccups aside, a week later and I'm ready for the best part. With the mold removed, I'll trim any of the resin that creeped up the sides, then flip it over and drill some holes in the underside for my pot lights so that I can run the lighting later. Before that though, I'll cut some styrofoam to length to cover the back and side so that I can build out the pool side a bit more.
Back to the pot lights, I'm gonna use some little LEDs, but I don't want the beam to go straight up, so I'll clip the ends of the LEDs. This disperses the light a bit more, giving a wider beam. And if you do it properly, it also means you've got little bits of glass all over the floor that make walking barefoot a bit more exciting. I'll stick these into the pot light holes and then lock them in place with a little bit of UV resin. Otherwise, it's just a case of wiring the LEDs to their respective battery packs. Ideally, I would have had all four running on a single 9 volt battery, but I don't have any 9 volt batteries, so instead I'm just going to run them in pairs. Finally, I'll attach a base with a cutout for easy battery access and I can get started on the top. To start, I've measured out a thin piece of L-shaped XPS foam, which I'll then attach a couple extra thin strips of foam to the edge, before adding some teeny tiny paving stones. To prime and protect the foam, I'll mix up Mod Podge with black paint and apply a liberal coating over the entire surface. And then once that's dried, I'll give the whole base a nice gray base coat and the edge tiles a nice dark blue. Then to add some quick shading and really make the texture stand out, I'll give the entire base a black wash. Then I can dab up the excess, leave it to dry, and then hit everything with a light gray and white dry brush. I wanted to make the grate that runs around the edge of the pool look plastic, so I figured that the best material to use would be plastic. To that end, I'll cut a whole bunch of tiny strips out of a thickish sheet of plastic card until I've got myself a nice bundle. And then to cut my bundle down to sticks, I can finally use my chopper. This is one of those things I bought years ago thinking I'd use it every day, and this is probably the second time it's been out of the box. But oh man, do it ever chop good. Several hours later, I've got a surplus of tiny plastic sticks and I'm ready to glue them in place. Now they are perhaps a bit too clean, so a quick dusting with an off-white should bring them more in line with the pool, and then I'll use the same rusty brown color to give everything else a bit of grime as well. Otherwise, the top is done and it's ready to be glued in place. Now before I finish the rest of the base, I want to tape off the resin so that I don't get hole filler and paint all over it. Speaking of which, I'll fill all the gaps using a mix of hole filler and PVA glue. And once that's given ample time to set, I'll come back through with a sanding block and make sure all the sides and seams are smooth. Then I'll coat the entire base in the same black paint and Mod Podge mix that I did for the top before prematurely peeling the green painter's tape off. This way I can apply the same gray base coat and black wash while worrying about getting it all over the resin. All that's left to do then is add some detail to the top. I'll start by applying a thick layer of gloss Mod Podge and then using my airbrush to spread it around and create ripples. I started using a straw in my lungs, but after passing out from a lack of oxygen, I decided maybe I ought to use a machine. Then I'll sprinkle some more detritus into the corners and wherever I imagine leaves and junk would gather before adding some tufts of grass and bits of dirt and leaves to the top. I'll then hold this in place with some PVA glue thinned out with water. Finally, as icing on the cake, I'll make a tiny closed for cleaning sign and then hang it off the ladder. Otherwise, we are on to the glamour shots.
As always, a massive thank you to the delightful folk over on Patreon that keep this channel running, and a special thank you to my newest supporters, LK, Angela Gaxiola, Bob Bay, Undead Hope, Michael DeMauro, Lucia Rodriguez, Clara Cranor, Nate, Ellen Berry, Rob Birch, and James Juries. You are the multi-tentacled horror that keeps this oversized skull of a channel pumping out silly videos every week. If you'd like to help out, then check out the links in the description, leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, and do all the other video-related things. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.